All right, and we're rolling. You look great. Uh, <laughs> so I'm, <laughs> I'm here with Tom today, who uh, had an integral role in, in putting on this event. So uh, Tom, tell me, what, what is your role in this event today? Yeah, so I work with a group called the REAL Cooperative, which stands for Regenerative Education, Action, and Leadership. And one of the things we try and do is, is come up with creative actions. So we, you know, story-based actions, things that have a good meme behind them. Um, I feel like uh, people connect to stories. So we're all kind of, everything we do is kind of create stories. And when there is a really positive story involved, more people are going are gonna to take notice and want to participate. And so we worked with Occupy Monsanto on developing this idea of doing an Eden at the FDA. Um, no one's ever done it before. And I was like, you know, we should do a stone soup. I grew up with the story of stone soup, um, you know, as, as a nursery rhyme, you know, as a, as a, as a folk fairy tale. And um, I, I feel like it's time for a, a new st story of stone soup. And in the story of stone soup, essentially, there's, it's, it's a time of great scarcity, a time where there's, it's devoid of, of, of food and of, of wealth. And I feel like right now we're in a similar position where there is, even though it seems like there's food everywhere, there's actually a great scarcity of healthy food, of nutritious food, of food that's sustainably grown and food that will really actually sustain us. We see that the amount of, of food allergies and gastrointestinal problems are on the rise, obesity, and, and obesity is a result of malnutrition. Um, and so we've come here to the FDA, the center for, at their Center for Food Safety and Applied Nutrition, to call for GMO labeling. And it's just a simple, simple st step. It's the, same, it's the same democratic right that is held by citizens in 61 other nations around the world. And as American citizens, we feel that we deserve that same right. And we feel as if by getting GMO labeling, that is the, a really a basic step to giving citizens the chance to opt out of this food that has never actually even been tested by the FDA or the USDA. So help the viewer understand, is there a bill before Congress right now, or are you asking the FDA to come up with their own bill? What do you want? Well, right now the FDA is considering whether or not to release genetically modified salmon on the market and into the ocean. Um, and there's a lot of concerns around that. These, these salmon have been genetically modified with um, an eel-like fish, and part of the idea is that they will grow much faster. Um, unfortunately, they're also very sickly, and they, they have the same uh, basic growth hormone that is in bovine growth hormone, and they require a lot of antibiotics to stay alive, and, and, and we're finding that that's not a very healthy thing to eat, and we're afraid that it's going to con contaminate the, the salmon that's it's in the ocean naturally. Um, and so we're taking public, right now the FDA is taking public comments on that until April 26th and so we're calling, we're making a public comment, a public statement just by being here today and encouraging people to make those comments. We've already gotten over 30,000 comments. We're also calling for the resignation of Michael Taylor and the end of the revolving door. Unfortunately, there is a, there is a revolving door of employees of Monsanto and DuPont and Dow Chemical and the FDA that is supposed to regulate those companies to make sure that they're not poisoning us. And, um, and unfortunately, it's kind of as if the, the fox is in the hen house. And so we're calling for, for that, those foxes to be removed. It's a very, very simple concept that we would have, the, the FDA would be looking out for the citizen safety as opposed to corporations' profits. Um, and that's, that's, what, that's one of the reasons why we're here. And, and we're really hoping that by being here, by shedding light on the FDA and their role in the process of, of having GMOs on the market, of having uh, poisons out there that our children are being fed, that, that more people will, will call the FDA and demand they make change. You've captured the attention of the Department of Homeland Security today. What do you think is the role of law enforcement in this event? Uh, well, the Homeland Security protects all federal buildings. Um, on any, any typical day, there will be Homeland Security members at this building. They, when, once they found out we were coming, they increased the amount of, of security forces that were going to be here. And they came over and talked to us in the morning, and, and they were actually interested in GMOs, on how to avoid them. And even, I candidly, one of, one of the members of Homeland Security told me that he felt that Monsanto was criminal that they were the true, the true criminals and he supported us being here today. So I think more than anything, they're there to make the people at the FDA feel safe. Um, we feel that the people at the FDA should make us feel safe. Yeah. Um, and and they're, they, they don't want any trouble and they've, they've come over 
various police departments have come over, taken our literature, they've taken non-GMO shopping guides because they want to know how they can avoid feeding their families GMOs. And, um, and really, their role is to get educated about this issue just like anybody else. Do you personally oppose the use of violence or force against peaceful people? Uh, yes, I would say so. And, and uh, today, you know, I don't really feel as if this is civil disobedience. I feel like this is nonviolent direct action. Civil disobedience is one type of nonviolent direct action. Um, where you would go and you'd stand somewhere that you weren't allowed to stand and even though you were told to leave you stay there anyways to make a point you block something last year we we saw people working with Occupy Monsanto block various uh, Monsanto facilities across the country stopping them from distributing these GMO seeds um, but today we're here in a very nonviolent very positive way calling for a simple democratic right to have GMOs be labeled so if uh, you support a bill that would require companies to label uh, their foods, uh, whether or not they have GMOs. That, that is correct. And you know, last year in California, I worked extensively to have uh, our Prop 37, which would have labeled GMOs, um, pass. Unfortunately, did not pass, partially as a result of companies like Monsanto, who spent $7 million to try and defeat it. There was uh, nearly $50 million spent to defeat us. Um, by these chemical companies and also the Grocery Store Manufacturers Association of America and uh, PepsiCo and Coke and Kellogg's, uh, General Mills and many others of that, of that nature that are selling these GMO riddled products. In your opinion, what is the appropriate punishment for a person who refuses to label GMO foods? Uh, I think that they should lose their corporate charter. Uh, corporations are, are they, they have a corporate charter, it gets renewed, they're there to uh, provide a, a good or service in support of society, in support of the citizenry, and companies that are selling these genetically contaminated products that are poisoning the citizenry and then try and cover it up by spending uh, their millions of dollars they're making from selling these poisons should lose their, their corporate charter. Excellent. Tom, you've been very generous with your time today. I want to thank you. Is there anything else you want to say? I think that's it. Thank you so much for coming and documenting this event. Thanks so much. It's my pleasure, sincerely.